Well, good evening. God's peace to you, his beloved saints, uh, or tonight I should say the bride. Here you are the bride of Christ, as we'll talk more about. Uh, since it's a season of epiphany, this is, it's always the first miracles of Jesus, some of his key teachings, and, and tonight's um, the wedding at Cana, and the, the readings always kind of structure themselves to fit alongside that theme and understanding of wedding as it reveals Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Uh, so we'll talk about that this evening, as well as thanks to God with Freya. She'll be baptized tonight, Jacob and Robert with membership. So uh, our Lord is, is chock full with his work that is being done, and thanks be to God for it as we gather around the throne of him tonight. Um, a few announcements before we get started tonight. First off, we've been busy doing the photo directory. Um, if uh, you haven't signed up yet, uh, members, as we get a, we're putting together the photo directory in-house, uh, feel free to do that. We have a couple weeks left of that going on. Um, if tonight you're sitting, oh, tonight's a good night. There are a couple of spare moments after service if you are available. Um, so that is an option here for you tonight. If you have not yet signed up and you want to tonight, you can do it. Um, it only takes a couple of minutes anyway, so it's quick, it's easy. Uh, just double check on your membership and de uh, contact information if anything's changed. That way we have accurate information as well. Uh, all that good stuff for pastoral care, uh, which I like so much. Um, also, you'll see as well, um, the congregational meeting is happening here towards the end of the month, January 22nd. It'll take place after the education hour, so around 11.15, 11.30 ish, we'll get started. It will be a potluck, so bring a dish to pass. You can pick, uh, pick up the annual reports. They're hot, hot off the press this week, so they're on the back there, a purple cover. You can take one of those and read it on your way out this evening as well. Um, with that, there's so much more. You can uh, look on your yellow insert uh, on your way out tonight, and your, the weekly calendar of coming up next week, and you'll see all that as well. Um, besides that, like I said, we're with our Lord tonight, and he is here with his bride to give all the gifts that he has won for us on the cross. And so as we come before him, let us confess our sins before him to receive the gifts of our Savior and to relish in all that Jesus Christ has done for us. Please stand this evening as our Lord comes to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Heaven and I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession... I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing responsibly tonight our intro. It. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Shout for joy to God, all the earth sing the glory of his name give to him glorious praise say to god how awesome are your deeds so great is your power that your enemies come cringing to all the earth worships
worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of men. Blessed be the God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. We sing now our Kyrie and the Gloria. governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people, and grant us your peace through all our days, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation, please be seated as we hear from God's word this evening. Our Old Testament lesson this night comes from the prophet Amos, the ninth chapter. In that day, I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen, and repair its breaches, and raise up its ruins, and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and all the nations who are called by my name, declares the Lord who does this. Behold, the days are coming, 
declares the Lord. When the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him who sows the seed, the mountains shall drip sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them on their land, and they shall never again be uprooted out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He sent out his word and healed them. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love. Our epistle reading this night comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Wives, submit to your own husbands, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of reverence for Christ, who is our bridegroom, let us now stand as we hear his gospel and as we begin by speaking the Alleluia, singing the Alleluia. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each of them holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And then Jesus said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine and did not know where it came from, Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. Now this, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Congregation, please be seated. At this time, I will invite Jacob and Robert forward here. You can bring Freya, too. What was that? Valerie. Forgive me. So I'm saying your last name. So come forward here, and we'll do the new member rites. Well, beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, 
All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now you both have been baptized. Freya will be baptized here in a moment. And you have been taught according to our Christian faith, according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said this, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you both this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave to you in your baptism, if so, answer by saying, yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Spirit. And do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Well, we rejoice with thankful hearts that you both are baptized, that you have received the teachings of our Lord, and as now that you've confessed the faith before your brothers and sisters and are absolved of all of your sins, know this, that as you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, that he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now receive this blessing. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you both the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace into life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your loving and great goodness in bringing this, your son and daughter, to the knowledge of your son, our Savior Jesus, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess before us your saving name. Grant that, bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Well, as you know, as you confess the faith, what a joy that is. And we both have certificates to remember that. I'll give them to you because you're the one with the, without the baby here. And so, and we have more to do because Freya, it's time to get her baptized. So we'll walk over there and we will continue now with the baptismal liturgy. Congregation, if you desire to follow along with us, it's on page 268 as we continue our service there. And in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever 
unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now feel free to give me her whole name. How are you named? Freya Lorelei Roberts, receive, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Uh, Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet, according to your great mercy, you preserve believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all of his host in the Red Sea yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. And through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you have sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Freya according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood, all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam, in which she herself has committed sins, would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, sponsors, you have entered into a faithful and loving work as well, because you're going to witness to Freya as she grows older what you heard tonight and what you saw tonight. And so when she grows up and as she's learning, you can say, I saw the night when Christ claimed you as his, his own, that you belong to him. So when she has time to doubt and worry, you can say, don't be afraid. The Lord Jesus has you. I got to see it with my own eyes. So that's the work that you're called to do this evening, and, and you're now going to be called card-carrying sponsors, too. Um, and so as you take these, the question that I will ask you is this. Is it your intention to serve as sponsors in the Christian faith for Freya? If so, answer by saying, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Will God enable you both to do this faithful and loving work and fulfill all that we are unable to do? Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now pray the prayer that we're going to teach Freya to pray her whole life by praying the prayer of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Now, on behalf of Freya, this is the faith that she believes, and we're going to teach her with her mouth to form as she grows. All of us, as we can remember our baptism into Jesus Christ tonight, we will say these vows as well. Freya, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, yes I believe. Freya, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. All right, come on, feel free to lean her over.
Freya Lorelei Roberts, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wonderful. Well, Freya, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, sanctify you with his grace into life everlasting. Amen. And receive this white garment to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. So too will you be clothed in his righteousness, and you will stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive now the inheritance that has been prepared for you from before the foundation of the world. And also, receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. I'll let you hold on to that here. So also, too, you will be watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. And also, on behalf of the congregation, a greeting from our elders. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures in heaven, in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ that together we might hear his word, receive our gifts, or his gifts, and proclaim the, the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this, the new birth of water and the spirit that you have given to Freya. Lord, as she continues to grow, may she understand and grow into your word and the love of your son daily. Lord, as she grows older, we do not know exactly where she will go in life, who she will be with, but we do know this now. You go with her. So, Lord, fulfill now these promises that you have given through Jesus Christ, our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Now, with this, with two new brothers and sisters joining the congregation, and now a new sister in the faith, let us thank and praise God by welcoming them, welcoming them now. continue now in our service since we have confessed our faith a couple of times now we will move forward with the, the, the hymn our sermon hymn tonight as we continue now
be seated. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now, this mystery is profound. I'm saying that it refers to Christ and his bride, the church. Now, dear people who are loved by Jesus Christ and who submit to him, that right there is marriage. Being loved by Jesus and submitting to him. That is what true marriage is, and that's what it always points to. That's the one flesh union. Husbands loving their wives as Jesus loves us. And wives submitting to their husbands as we submit and order ourselves under Jesus Christ our Lord. Now this text, it always reminds me of working with couples who are preparing for marriage. Because we always go over this beautiful text in one way, shape, or form or another. Now, preparing couples for marriage, it can be tough. But I also enjoy very often the fact that I have my best conversations of the gospel during those moments. Because marriage points to Jesus. And what a great opportunity. And many people do connect and get it when we go through and we lay it all out. And even though sometimes it can be tough, I love calling couples to something higher for marriage. That's what St. Paul does in our text today. And because of how marriage is mistreated due to sin, I like to teach and enlighten, sometimes in interesting ways. Now, one of example of this is that today it's encouraged and it's thought of to be a good thing when a woman degrades herself and gives a man everything he wants, including an easy way out, by living together before marriage. And I've come to understand that women do this because they hope it will motivate the man to take the next step in going toward marriage. But it usually, as it, studies are starting to show, it encourages the man to just keep doing what he's doing. He has everything he wants. Why get entangled in legal matters? Living together always comes up in the beginning of premarital talks. And when it does, come up in conversation. I talk through it. I teach about how it's harmful for marriage and how it gives a bad witness to what marriage is because marriage is about Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. And after we do and we talk about it, we always start looking for solutions on the issues of living together and how we need to do that before we can move forward. Now people, they think, they've come to think that the church thinks that sex is icky. So when I tell them that living together is not going to gel as we move forward with marriage, a common solution is that they'll tell me that they'll just avoid sex by one of them, usually always the guy, sleeping on the couch or something like that, which they plan on doing for months on end. Problem solved, right? Yeah, right. Besides the fact that sleeping on the couch is a one-way ticket to back problems, this is a setup for fail doesn't honor what marriage is. So I love to look at the guy because it's always on the guy. It's never on the lady. It's always on the guy. And I'll ask him this. Do you love your fiance? Are you physically attracted to her? And I got him with that one. She's sitting right next to him. What's he going to say? And so he says yes. He loves her. He is attracted to her. And then I point out and I'll say this to the guy. Well, what is wrong with you? You admit that you are attracted, you have this beautiful woman in the same house as you that you're attracted to, and your solution is to stay as far away from her as possible and sleep on the couch instead. That's kicking against the go-ads there, literally. It's fighting what God has made and created marriage for. Now saying that always really surprises them, and that's the point. My goal is that I want them to honor what God has created in marriage and to be blessed by it because God wants people to be blessed by marriage and to live as Christ wants his people to live and honor marriage and not this halfway thing that we've concocted so often. So what's the solution? How do we honor this one flesh union? Get married now. Stop living a lie. Repent be forgiven. The solution to the problem of living together is not who gets the couch, but where the address is of the courthouse, and how to find a justice of the peace to get it done right away, or to have a private ceremony with me in the next couple of days. The big party can always happen later on. Now we honor Jesus and marriage. 
We love Jesus. That's what we want to do. Now, I tell you all of this today because I assume that if you've been around here long enough, you've stuck it out here this long, that you're here to fight for the heritage that God has given to us as his people, and that we cannot accept the apathy that so often drives and ruins people's lives and ruins the witness of their faith before Jesus Christ. Marriage is a good place to get to work at. Because I tell you, this mystery is profound. And I'm telling you that it's talking about Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Last Thursday, we celebrated Epiphany. It's the day that the star guided the wise man to find Jesus Christ. And from this account, we learn and should come to expect that God has laid out the gospel of Jesus Christ in the design of the creation that he has made. The star pointed to Jesus. Today, marriage points to Jesus as well. God created marriage. And so all cultures will have a witness of Jesus and his bride, the church. Marriage points to Jesus. The institutions that God established, they are not arbitrary. They're not up for defining or recognizing however we want. They are to be recognized as God created them to point towards Jesus. And as Christians, we have the inside scoop as we see all these things pointing to him. With marriage, we must work and embark upon this as Christians. But today it is, I will tell you, an uphill battle to get at. And we've often shot ourselves in the foot. But the work is doable. It just means we need to relearn what we have forgotten as a people. The work that we must accomplish now is with a lot of confession and absolution, teaching, which is what I'm up here to do tonight, and a recognition of what God has called us to be in his son, Jesus. So with marriage, it's all about, as we've already said, Jesus and his bride, the church. That's what marriage is. And as we move forward, keep that in mind. Because perhaps you've noted that the church cares a lot about a marriage. We care about what happens in the bedroom because it will directly impact the gospel. Very true. Scripture lays out that our stance and practice of marriage will determine how the gospel is heard and received. God has built marriage in such a way that when Christians defy it, they shred their own witness concerning Christ. And when you put it like that, it makes you realize that the church is not strict about marriage. Rather, we have not been strict in teaching about it enough. The church has decided to not touch it, and people have come to expect it. But make no mistake about it, God cares. Marriage is both his estate, it belongs to him, and it's his blessing for us. From our gospel lesson, though it's not our text to meditate upon tonight, it's no accident that Jesus does his first miracle at a wedding. We're told this, that being the first of his signs at a wedding, Jesus manifested his glory. The church cares about marriage and should care because Jesus cares. When the Pharisees ask Jesus in Matthew chapter 19 if it's permissible for divorce, Jesus scolds the Pharisees like children who must not have read the very first page of the Bible. He tells them, do you not know that he who created them in the beginning made them both male and female and said that a man will leave, forsake his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two will become one flesh? Well, therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate, Jesus says. That's how he lays it out. God has brought together. That's why the church cares about marriage. We care about how people live prior to marriage. We care about how people enter into it, how they live in marriage, and how marriage ends. Deviations on marriage always will obscure and hide Jesus Christ and hurt people, and we don't want people to get hurt. That's Paul's main point in our lesson from Ephesians. Though marriage, through it, we see how Jesus relates to his bride, the church. Paul quotes the same as Jesus, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. And just like Jesus does in Matthew, he tells us what marriage is. When a man forsakes his mom and dad and holds fast to his wife instead, and they become one flesh. And then he says, I'm telling you guys, this is talking about Jesus and the church. And so this teaches us that as marriage is created by God, 
it will function how God has created it. And any efforts to change it will prove futile. It's like coding language. Any error in the code will cause the website to not work or function. You can't fight what God has made. And if you do and you try to embrace something else, you'll only trip up to your own destruction because God cannot be mocked. But of course, this doesn't stop people from trying. And even in our own country, if you haven't noticed with the recent legislation, we can say, as they will tell us, that you can define it however you want it to work. But that's nothing short of rebellion and rejection and an illustration of the gospel itself. But God has an order, and we're here to enforce and reflect that order in our lives. Now, in the cases I mentioned at the beginning with people living together, to enforce and get couples to honor marriage by either splitting up prior to the marriage or going to the courthouse and getting the deed done, it might sound like a deal breaker. But I have actually had people, several of them, who do love Jesus, and they get this, and they're just like, all right, sounds good, and their marriages are better for it. This is worthwhile. Because when I always check in with them six months and a year or in the years to come, and I sit down and talk with them again about how it's going, we note this as we go forward. Marriages are healthier for this because they have aligned themselves with God's blessing and design for how he has built it. This is the image that's given every single time, that one flesh union of marriage in the Bible, every single time. And this is why marriage exists. God created marriage between husband and wife to illustrate for us Jesus and the church. The man, the husband, is Jesus. The man, the wife, is the church. That's what St. Paul says here. This is the definition that the civil government is even supposed to recognize because that's what God made, and it's as plain as the creation that we see out there, as that we observe with our own senses. We, uh, even when we try to ignore it and deny it, God's design will always be reverted back to, no matter what altercations are made to it, because this is always the design. It's like a rubber band snapping back into form. It's like gravity. It's always going to function this way. There's no other way to sustain marriage apart from honoring God's design and will for marriage to illustrate Jesus. So in the end, all altercations and arrangements called marriage that are not the one flesh union of one man and one woman will always cause the society that supports it to fail because the will of God will prevail. Everything else is a perversion to it. There cannot be two Jesuses in a marriage. There's no love to give. There cannot be two churches in a marriage, for there's no gifts to be received. In such a system, there is literally no future to germinate and multiply. But there also cannot be a Jesus who does not first marry his church, but still live with her before marriage. That's, to think of that be like having Jesus without the cross. There's no church who does not submit to her Lord Jesus because she'll never learn to trust him or love him. There's no Jesus who goes looking for another bride, because he has his church and he's faithful. The bride does not go looking for other husbands. That's idolatry, adultery, which in the Bible are always one and the same. So when you put it like this, especially for us as Christians, it makes all of the misconceptions and misunderstandings about marriage disappear though we sometimes try to deceive ourselves with what we call love, choice, consent. Perversions, they're always going to be seen for what they are. Demonic distortions of the gospel. Mankind's hatred against its own creator. This includes one-night stands, hookup culture, divorce, adultery, abuse, pornography, living together outside of marriage, homosexuality, you can list it all. Every single one of the Six commandment sins are an attack on Jesus and his church. So we need to believe again the gospel, that Jesus loves his bride, giving himself up for her, for us then to honor our own marriages. Jesus makes us holy through the washing of the rebirth of water and the word which Freya received this evening. Jesus Christ is committed to her just as he is committed to each one of you. All of the grimaces then that we, as we hear of what Jesus does for his church, for women, all the grimaces will just melt away when they understand that submitting to their husbands is like how G we submit to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because there's nothing better than life than submitting to our Lord who gives all that he has for us. And 
for all the lazy and abusive men out there. They're put to open shame. They're called to repentance when you realize that loving your wife means loving her as Jesus loves his bride, the church. Headship for men does not serve us, speaking as a man myself. It's serving those to whom we are given. The wife submits because she trusts everything will be done for her, for her benefit. That's why we submit to Christ, and that's why Jesus loves us. It's a system that works together in that way. Husbands, you're to love as Jesus loved us. As Jesus died for his bride, he let his reputation take the beating. Jesus allowed the accusations to land on him without giving a shred of defense on his behalf. That's how husbands are to love their wives, just as Jesus loved his bride, the church. So if your wife is living in such a way that she's exposed and burdened, then she's bearing the burden that you are called to bear in Christ's name. Jesus Christ, he reveals himself through this profound mystery of marriage. It's a, it's a school bed for faith. So if you're married, then your marriage is illustrating Jesus in the church. Always remember that. Your marriage shows the unity and the love that God will achieve when Jesus comes again in glory to be with his church. In fact, the word for this when Jesus comes again is the consummation of the creation. That's a marriage term. If you're not married, if you lost your spouse, you're single, then you provide the needed tension that shows that this consummation has not yet occurred. Jesus has proposed, but Jesus has, not, has now gone away to prepare a place for us, just like a good fiancé does for her, his bride. So before the consummation, Jesus does not live with the bride. Do not cling to me, Jesus tells Mary. That's another marriage word. This is something only a husband can do with his bride. Jesus himself recognizes that while the pro proposition has been given, the consummation has not yet occurred. But Jesus will come for his bride. Make no mistake about it. He will come again in glory. So while we're separated from Jesus here, we are called to honor, to long for, and yearn for the day of his coming again when we will be united in love with our Savior. Now, married people, if you're to show forth then and strive for the gospel, and if single people, if you're showing us the tension of waiting for Jesus to come back, we see how all of this fits together in our gospel, that Jesus Christ loves his church and gave himself up for her, and yet we pray for him to come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. I can't change the country at large. We can't change all that's out there. But we can start right here with our own marriages to honor this estate with our lives and with our bodies. Whether you are single, widowed, married, you are having a goal in front of you tonight to be a witness, to present your bodies, to illustrate the depths of the gospel. Your bodies are an epiphany that Jesus Christ gave himself for you. He shed his blood to make you, his bride, holy. And God, he'll defend your life, and he will keep you. And that is what we display and give. So finally, as we go through all of this, since all of us have contributed and have failed to live up to this standard, <laughs> me, myself, chief among them, how are we to show forth the standard of marriage? The answer is not to throw the institution away when we have sinned, but to take it up again and honor it. For when we return to our heavenly bridegroom, Jesus Christ treats us the same way. Though we have been unfaithful, he always remains faithful because Jesus is committed to his bride no matter what. So marriage, this most basic and fundamental building block of all society from which all of us owe our very existence to is a mirror displaying the benefits that are yours right now in Jesus Christ our Lord because he is faithful and loving to you. And when we're not, he continues to display his faithfulness with open arms to come to him, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and he will give you rest. There's work for us to do for sure, but there's hope in all of, for all of us as well when we realize that marriage is the gospel. of Jesus Christ giving himself for you, and that he will never take away. May that shield and guard you, that Jesus will feed you, his bride, this night, with his various glorious divine body, and that one day he will indeed consummate that in the hope and joy of the life of the world to come. In his name we pray. Amen. Now the grace of your Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, your Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Let us now continue this evening as we sing as our Lord makes us clean by singing just that. Please stand as we sing our offertory and as we present the gifts of our Lord uh, to our Lord this evening. Dear God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your children here on earth, and grant us grace that your name would be kept holy by us and in all the world, through the pure and true teaching of your word and in the fervent love we show forth in our lives. Turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you send us this night your kingdom once more. Continue to allow it to come and to expand and to bring all those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, so that by faith the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us with your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Dear Father, into your merciful hands we commend all whom we pray this evening as we list them before you. For Mary, Sandy, Leah, and Olivia, for Rayanne, Julie, Ardell, Tammy, for Jerome, Kari, Sienna, and Allie, Doug, for Pastor Matthew Wood, our missionary and his family, for our seminarian Christopher Shearman and his family, for Sharon, Donald, Elizabeth, Rini, Tiffany, Michael, Bill, Maverick, Taylor. Lord, we give thanks for the work that you do in our midst, that you send people to care for your creation. Bless those whose work is difficult and dangerous. Lord, especially those who serve in our armed forces here and away, and those in our own congregation for Daniel and Hunter. Lord, we give thanks for the gift of life that you have given through us, that you work through your creation to sustain and keep it. We ask that you bless Claudia and Tisha as they continue along in their pregnancies, that you would guard and keep them to bring them to term and to help provide for them and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we give thanks for Freya and bringing her into the, your family this evening. We ask you to bless and sustain her always. Lord, in your mercy. Defend all of our marriages, Lord, against the evil one who would seek to tear apart and rip and destroy the illustration that is there in the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but by your Spirit, help us to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And finally, dear Father, deliver us of all evil, body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we trust, O oh Lord, because of your great mercy, to hear and to answer us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 We sing our final hymn this evening, The Church is One Foundation. 